here are the lottery results. We have um, the Indiana Fever with number with the number one pick in the 2024 draft. We all we then have the LA Sparks with the second pick, the Phoenix Mercury with the third pick, and the Seattle Storm with the fourth pick. Now this is huge, huge deal. This is a huge deal because um, if y'all remember, Aaliyah Boston uh, interviewed Caitlin Clark a couple weeks ago. Um, and, uh, Caitlin was like hinting at, Hey, maybe we'll play together. Um, I think that Caitlin fits the best with Indiana. And it was my personal opinion that if Indiana got the number one pick in the 2024 draft, that Caitlin would opt to go to the draft. Um, to me, uh, Indiana fits well with Caitlin Clark as a person. Like it, it, it feels like she will do well there. Uh, of course, she'll thrive any any at any team, but in terms of like the culture and just like the slower pace of things, I feel like LA is 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 too glitz and glammy uh, for you know, and um, Phoenix is like extremely far. Same thing for for Seattle, and I think uh, Indiana is the perfect situation because Indiana is trying to figure out what like what situation they're going to have in terms of their, their guard play for, for, um, for, for LA, you know, is Jordan Canada's like that. That's, that's their guard leader is, is Jordan Canada and Lexi Brown um, for, for the Phoenix Mercury, you know, Di- Dinah Tarazi is still there and, 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 and doing her thing. And, and, um and, and for Seattle storm, it's Jewel Lloyd for the, for the Indiana fever. It's no one. I mean, sure. Sure. You have Kelsey Mitchell, but like, you know, uh, she she's not. It, it's not going to hinder what Caitlin Clark is able to do, and also, um, you know, we'll see we'll see how like what that situation looks like. But I think Caitlin Clark going to Indiana is a smart move, and I think now that Indiana has the number one pick, I I think I think it's I think it's uh, Indiana Fever all the way. And y'all, um, let's t- let's do a let's do a step back into history because. Um, there was a time when the, um, then silver stars, uh, San Antonio silver stars, now the Las Vegas aces had the number one pick. I think it was three times in a row. They, they, they drafted, uh, Kelsey Plum. Then they drafted, uh, you know, uh, Asia Wilson or Jackie Young and then Asia Wilson. Um, and these three players are now back to back WNBA champions. And so I, I think it's very likely that we will see um uh I, I think it's very likely that we'll see Caitlin Clark, Aaliyah Boston, and Alyssa Smith on this team for years and years to come. And we will see championships in Indiana. Um it, it's it's gonna it's likely gonna happen because it's gonna be a dynamic team. It's going to be a very, very dynamic team and a great team to watch. Like truly, um, y'all, uh, y'all, let me know what y'all think because, yeah. Um, Kyra says followed Indiana all last season because of Leo Boston. I am excited for what's to come for them. Yeah, yeah. This is this is huge. This is absolutely huge for Indiana Fever fans. So Indiana Fever fans, like. This team, I really thought that Indiana was was going to fold, uh, because the last couple, well, not, not this past season, but but the season before and the season before that, like it was to the point where they had you know two thousand or less fans at games, and it was like the the games were empty. Um, at one point, they weren't in Gamebridge uh, Fieldhouse; they were just sort of like traveling to different areas, and they were they were struggling for fans. Um, they got Aaliyah Boston and they got a lot of the South Carolina fans who came, um, who, to, 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 uh, you know, support the team. They got Grace Berger, uh, last season as well. She played for Indiana and that brought a, a, a good amount of fanfare as well. I think getting Caitlin Clark, that's going to put Indiana's numbers through the roof. Um, and that's going to be just huge for this team. Absolutely huge. Um, so yeah, Kyra says Indiana is a, is definitely a perfect fit for Caitlin. I completely agree. Um, Nolan says the Caitlin Aaliyah interview just makes you wonder Caitlin Clark in the Midwest. Yeah. And I also think it's helpful for, uh, for her to be so close. I mean, Indiana is not, is not extremely close to Iowa, but it's not that far. It's not that far at all. Um, it's a lot closer than just about every other place. 
um, uh, besides Chicago, I would say. Uh, so, you know, it seems likely. It seems likely. Uh, so, yeah, let me know what y'all think in the comments below. But, like, it's, hey, the Indiana Fever got what they wanted. They got the number one pick. Uh, we are going to see Caitlin Clark possibly in Indiana uh, pairing up with her good friend of Aaliyah Boston. Um, Los Angeles uh, sparks with the number two pick. It makes me wonder who they're choosing because, um, you know, the question is, are you going to pick Cameron Brink? If I was LA, I would pick Cameron Brink. I 100% would pick Cameron Brink as number two um, in the draft because um, this, this LA Sparks team is a team that um, is very big focused. You know, you have the best player um, on their team is Neka Ogumake. Neka Ogumake came from Stanford. The idea of Neka, um, you know, kind of working with Cameron Brink and, and, and teaching a, a fellow um, Stanford Cardinal um, the ways of of navigating the WNBA, ways of of, of being a post player in the WNBA, I think that would be huge. Um, and I think it, it makes a lot of sense because Cameron Brink is a Cali girl. It makes sense for her to probably just stay in California. Um, and it makes sense for LA to draft her because, you know, I, I can't really see a future. I can't ever, can't really see the sparks without um, a big being the best player because for years, the LA sparks had um, Lisa Leslie who was just sort of dominating. Right. And then you had Candace Parker, uh, Lisa Leslie gave it to Candace. Candace gave it to NECA. Now, NECA is giving it to who? Possibly Cameron Brink, in my opinion. But we'll see. We'll see how that goes, though. We will see how that goes. Who do you think um, the L the L the LA Sparks will uh, pick at number two? Um, I think it's I think it's Cameron Brink. Um, and then number three, Paige Beckers to the Phoenix Mercury. Uh, Phoenix had the number three pick, um, and it makes sense for them to draft a player like Paige Beckers. Um, and really have uh, Dinah Tarazi sort of teach Paige all she knows in her in her likely final year next year. Um, I think that would be huge. Uh, so, so in my opinion, this list, uh, the lottery results are uh, exactly what I expected. <laughs> um, and we will likely see Caitlin at number one to Indiana, uh, Cameron Brink at number two to the LA Sparks. Um, Paige Beckers or at, at number three to the um to the Phoenix Mercury. And then for number four, um, I would probably say maybe Camilla Cardoso uh to the Seattle Storm. So those are my thoughts about that. Uh let me know, let me know what you all think in the comments below. Um, I do thank y'all for watching. If y'all can, please hit that like button. That would be awesome. But yeah, those are your results for the for the lottery. Um, that, that's all you need to know. Um, let me know what y'all think about it, but yeah, that, that's about it. That is about it. Let's see what y'all got to say. Uh, my phone says the WNBA set up the next dynasty for the league. Yes. They did the same thing with Seattle with Jewel and Stewie. Yes. And Vegas with Plum, Wilson and Young. Completely agree. Completely agree. Um, let's see. Pretty Ugly says, as good as Caitlin is, do you think if she goes to Indiana, she takes away from Aaliyah Boston? I ask because Caitlin's game is like LeBron. They need everything to run through them. So here's the thing. I don't think it takes it, it, it takes the it takes the the star power, a little bit of the star power and a little bit of the shine away from Aaliyah Boston for sure. I I, I do think that. Um, but I think it's 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 still it's a net positive either way. It's a net positive for Aaliyah Boston because now Aaliyah Boston has an elite player who can get uh who can get her the ball. You know, um Aaliyah Boston at times this past season, there was times where it was like, come on, like get her the ball, like pass her the ball. And 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 we know that Kaylin Clark can work with a big player because Look at what she did for years with Monica Sinano. Um, Caitlin Clark can be a very good facilitator for post players. She can be. She's she's shown that she can be. Uh, when when she played for uh, when um, Monica Sinano was on the team, uh, yes, a lot of the stuff that that uh, Iowa does this year is hundred percent going through Caitlin Clark because there 
because while they have Hannah Stokey, Hannah Stokey isn't there yet. You know, she's not where Monica Sinano was. And so I think her pairing up with um, with Aaliyah Boston, I think that's great. That's great for Aaliyah Boston because she'll have a player who can get her the ball. Also, um, Aaliyah Boston and Alyssa Smith will not have to be the sole focus. Um, when you have a, a player on your team that can kind of shoot it from anywhere from the three point line, you're less likely to get double teamed because that player, their defender can't get off them. And so in terms of, um, Aaliyah Boston still being able to get points and, 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 and get and you know, make stuff happen. I don't think it changes. Does some of uh, Aaliyah Boston's star power change a little bit? Yes, yes. You know, right now Aaliyah Boston is on literally every single thing related to the Indiana Fever, and it sh as it should be uh, as the number one pick, um, that will change a little bit because Caitlin Clark will be everywhere, and that, I think that's fine. Like that—that's the nature of being the number one pick. So yes, in terms of the, the star power and 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 the shine, yes, a little bit. But overall, this is a huge positive for Aaliyah Boston, in my opinion. Like this is. This is not a bad thing. And they've played together. They've, they've been teammates in the past. And so they 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 know each other. They're familiar with each other. They like each other. Um, and Kaylin Clark has proven that she can work with a post player. She can. She can work with a post player who is capable of, of, of scoring the basketball. And to me, that's huge. Um, this is a huge, huge deal. Uh, we're going to see um, Indiana with, you know, the three-headed monsters of – Kaylin Clark, Nalissa Smith, Aaliyah Boston. Um, and it's great to see. And if I was, um, if I was, you know, Lynn Dunn, the GM for the Indiana Fever, I would be saying, okay, who doesn't fit the the core of these three? Whose playing style does not fit this? And you gotta go. Because you need to, you need this whole team to circulate around these three players. That's what you need. You, you need no one to distract detract from from the play that three, these three players can make. Um, that's you know if if I'm if I'm Indiana, that's what I'm doing. You're going all in on these three players, all in, just like um, the 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 Las Vegas Aces went all in on their three of Asia Wilson, Jackie Young, and Kelsey Plum. That's what you do. But we will see what happens. We will see what happens. Let's see what else y'all got to say. Um, honestly, agrees with uh, you, pretty ugly. Um, uh, I would have preferred Caitlin in Seattle in a sort of bird replacement. Um, sure. And I'm and, and I'm sure if Seattle had the number one pick, they would of course pick Caitlin Clark if she if she opted for the draft. Um, but but yeah, they, they're number four, so there's not. There's is no way Caitlin is not being drafted number one if she's going in the draft. Um, so so yeah, we'll see. Uh honestly says I think Clark would go to Indiana, Brink would go to LA, Be Beckers to Phoenix. Yes, I guess we completely agree. Uh honestly, we we completely agree. Um B girl uh 1214 says, What I thought Paige was only a junior. Can she still declare? Yes, she is of age to uh, to declare, yes, she is. She is el eligible to declare. So for um, yeah, it's it's about age. So you know, um, she she's old enough. Uh, honestly, says how in the world does New York still have a top ten pick? Well, it's because every every WBA team has a um. Wait, what? Um, hold on. Let's 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 take a look at the uh at the uh, WNBA draft order. Um, let's see. Um, because um, give me one second, guys. So New York does not have a top 10 pick. So New York is uh is number 11. They're going to pick number 11. So so what so what the WNBA does is the the bottom four teams enter in the draft lottery and and then we'll see who who's the who's the um 
like who actually gets the number one pick and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but when it comes to five through 12, it's completely based off of the previous season standings. So um, the, the New York Liberty um, is number 11. Uh, the Las Vegas Aces would have been number 12, but they traded away that pick uh, to LA. Um, I, I did explain that a little bit in my previous uh, video, sort of explaining about the uh, draft lottery. So if, if that's helpful, um, I would uh, send you there. Um, Kentucky Lucky says, Kaylin, uh played well with her former center in Iowa. So if she goes to the WNBA, it would be uh, a good t- Yep, I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah, the Indiana team is going to be scary. They were a playoff-capable team last year. Yes. They were... They were right. They were right there. They really were. <laughs> That's funny. Honestly, says new law firm alert, Boston Smith, Clark and Associates. <laughs> yes. Yes. If I am, if I am Indiana, that's what I'm doing. Yes. This team needs to be about those three players. Those three players. That's what these, this team needs to be about. Um, and anybody who detracts from the success of these three players need to go. To, to me, that's 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 what you do. That is that is what you do. Um, uh, can't wait to see Caitlin in the WNBA. Yeah, she's gonna be good. She's gonna be good. Uh, Aaliyah Boston handled the spotlight just fine, but she could also live without it. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah. And and, and I think and I think the same thing for Caitlin Clark. Uh, you know the. You know, this is going to be, it's going to be good. This is going to be very good. All right, guys, y'all have any more um, thoughts or comments about the WNBA draft? Um, let me know. Um, all right. Who do you think is better? Uh, I, I don't know who is, I don't know. Um, uh, goodness, uh, goodness rated boo, I think. Um who is uh Nanny Nanis Nanisisco? I don't know who you're, I don't know who you're talking about. Um can you can you uh clarify? I know that the 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 second one is Caitlin Clark, but I don't know I don't know who who the Nanisisco. I I don't know who that is. So, yeah, if you can if you can clarify that would be awesome. Um all right, B Girl twelve fourteen says so. To be clear, the t- draft uh, in twenty twenty five, there will be a, a new expansion team. Yes, yes, there will be. There will be a new expansion team in um, the Bay Area. Yes. Um. Uh. When does the second team come? So the the second team is kind of uh. We will see. Um, so the, so the WNBS hits, hit some, uh, roadblocks and getting that and getting that second team up and running. So we will see, um, how will they fill their rosters? So the goal for the WNBA will to, will be to, um, have two teams. So you can do a draft expansion. Uh, you'll, you'll have a, you'll have an expansion draft, um, where teams will be able to, um, select, um, uh, their core players. Uh, and then there'll be a, a draft of the remaining players in the league um, and then putting funnel, funneling them to where they're supposed to go. If if you all find it helpful, I can make an explainer video about how the previous expansion draft worked. Um, so if, if that's helpful, let me know and I can and I can make that video. But but yeah, there will be a, there will be an expansion draft um, and and, you know, the you know, it, it would help if um, two two teams were were in the expansion draft together. All right. Let's see. Let's see what else y'all got to say. Let's see. Kyra says, uh, time for Indiana to trade away everyone besides Leah Boss and Alyssa. I I, th- I think you might be right, Kyra. <laughs> I think I think you might be right. I think you right you might be right. Um Uh, honestly says doesn't matter who the person is the answer is Clark yeah oh oh okay 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 Sabrina Inescu versus Caitlin Clark um who do I think is actually be- like so I mean they play two different positions so 
Sabrina Inescu is a shooting guard and Caitlin is a is more of a point guard. Um, so uh but thank y'all for uh for uh, t- telling me the um um what you meant. But yeah, um they I mean they're they're two different players. Like I if you're asking who would I rather have on a team, I would say I'd rather have Caitlin Clark. That's who I'd rather have on a team between Caitlin Clark and Sabrina Ionescu. But this is not saying that Sabrina Ionescu is, is, is not a great player. Uh, but I would, I would prefer to have a point guard who is an exceptional shooter than just a shooting guard. So that's, that, that's how I weigh it. But like, they're both extremely talented players. Um, but yeah, I, I would, I would pick Caitlin Clark because she is a, um, she's a point guard who can just shoot lights out. And Sabrina Inescu is just a shooting guard. And also, you know, Caitlin Clark has like dealt with um, double teams, triple teams. Like she's, she's dealt with just about everything. Um, and she's kind of held her own. So, so yeah, if, if I was a GM and I had to pick a guard between them two, I would pick Caitlin Clark any day. Yeah. But that is no shade, no shade against Sabrina Inescu. She's a great player. She really is. Um, that's just, that's just who I would go with. Uh, that'd be my focus for sure. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you are secret decoder. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Nolan, GM Lynn Dunn does have a lot of options. Yes, a hundred percent. She has a lot of options. She has a lot of really good options. Um, because you know, uh, Indiana has some pieces. So it's about, it's, it's about thinking about, okay, well, do you want to trade these pieces? Do you want to talk to some of these players and say, Hey, um, are you okay with us adjusting your role? Because now that we're likely getting a player like Caitlin Clark in the, in, on this team, this, this team will not be about you anymore. So do you want to learn how to play with that and win a championship, uh, down the road or, uh, do you just want to do your own thing and leave? You know, that that's something that the GM Lynn Dunn is going to have to talk about. She's going to have to talk about that um, for sure. Um, Pam and Eggs, I, I just love your name, Pam and Eggs. <laughs> Says, uh, Sparks to take Brinks. Uh, who will join other Star- uh, Stanford alum? Yeah, yeah, that, that that's my opinion, yes. Um... Uh, yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, she's uh Caitlin Clark is a lights out point guard. 100 percent She is. Uh, pretty ugly says for me, both are similar. Sabrina is a hybrid, plays both point guard and shooting guard. I think Clark has more fire in her belly. Uh she wouldn't have folded in the play. Yeah, yeah, she, she wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um though while Sabrina Inescu can technically play a point guard position. I don't think she she's not a point guard, whereas Caitlin Clark is more of a point guard. She she's more of a facilitator um, of sorts. Uh, but yeah, both are play, both are great players. Like honestly, I would love to have you know if I was a GM, I would love to have either one of them on my team. I would. They're both phenomenal. But if I had to choose between the two, I'm picking Caitlin Clark uh, because you always need a point guard. And if you got a point guard who can shoot better than most shooting guards. I'm going for the point guard. Um, next day air says we need to grow the game. Caitlin to LA. <laughs> um, next day air is no way Caitlin's going to LA because LA has a number two pick. If LA had the number one pick, sure. But I think she probably wouldn't even, even opt it for the draft. She wouldn't opt for the gra- for the draft, in my opinion, if LA had the number one pick. But we will see. We will see. Um Uh, B girl, 1214 says, yes, I would appreciate a video breakdown of the expansion procedure. Yep. I can do that. I can't wait for where spaces, uh, players in the league. Yep. Too much challenge to cut early. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. That's, that's no problem. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll plan to do that in the future. Uh, what we'll do is we'll, we will, we will recap, um, the, the last expansion draft that the WNBA had. I think it was the last one was when, um, was when the WNBA added, uh, the Atlanta dream. So, uh, so we'll, we'll go over that and sort of talk through that and, and, and what that procedure was like, though it, it may be slightly different this time around because 
Um, each time there's an expansion draft, uh, the Players Association has to be involved in it as well. So it may be a little bit different this time around, but we'll see.